Hello, my fellow scientists. So I brought you into my winter wonderland. And I'm so excited to go on a nature walk with you. We're gonna be using our senses today to be able to look at the nature around us, to be able to hear different sounds. We might even use some smell and we might touch as well. So join me, let's go. So one of the things that I like to do when I'm in the forest is to use my hearing, my ears. So what I do is I close my eyes and I put my hand up and I count how many sounds I can hear while I'm sitting very quietly. And you'll be surprised in the forest how many very small sounds that you can hear. In the forest, we can hear lots of really interesting sounds. Sometimes bird calls, sometimes animals scurrying along the forest. We can hear trees creaking, the wind blowing through the trees. Use those ears, see what you can hear. I think I've spotted something in the trees using my eyes. I'm gonna go and investigate. So I found something very interesting in this tree. I know what it is. I'm gonna give you some hints and I want you to see if you can guess what it is. This animal has lots, actually 30,000 quills coming out of its body. It sits in the trees in the winter time, eats bark, buds, leaves, twigs, and right now he's sleeping in the tree. Do you have a guess as to what it might be? So if you guessed a porcupine, you were right. This is our friend, Mr. Porcupine, who is sitting up on a lovely winter's day, and he has those quills to protect himself from predators. He will turn his body around and hope that some of those quills will fall off and hit into the predator. And the quills all have little barbs on them so that when they enter the skin, they're very, very hard to remove. So it's a very effective way of protecting himself. Right now he's having a nice little snooze in the tree. Oh my goodness, I can see the porcupine has started to move. He's crawling up the top of the branch looking for some tasty bark. As you can see he's walking pretty slow. Oh, now he's decided he's gonna turn around. Oh, can you see that tail sticking out? Oh, there it goes around the other side of the tree. Maybe he's decided he's gonna go back down the other way. Yep, here he goes. Oh, and look, he's turned around. He's going backwards. Look at his tail going up and down. That's a very interesting way to climb down the tree. I wonder if he does that to protect himself for predators that might come up the tree. There he goes all the way down. What an interesting thing to see on our walk. One of the places insects can go in the winter time is inside plants. So this, what I have in front of me, is a goldenrod plant, and this is what we call a gall. And what happens is in the fall, a little fly comes along and lays an egg inside the stem of this plant. That egg hatches into a little fly larva, or an immature fly, and the plant starts to grow lots of tissue around it and forms this gall. So inside here is a little fly larva who's staying nice and cozy for the winter. I'm going to try and open it and see if we can see it. So I've managed to get this one open and you can see right here there's a little white fly larva. And he's nice and cozy inside that gall. It would keep him nice and warm for the winter. And sometimes birds know that this has a food source in it and they will come along and they will actually poke a little hole inside the gall and they will eat that larva out from the inside. So birds like chickadees and nuthatches, downy woodpeckers will all do that in the winter as a food resource. So the other thing we can look at when we're out for a nature walk and for signs of wildlife is we can look for nests. So you might have seen maybe some birds nests that have been left for the winter. The other type of nest, and I'll give you hints again about this type of nest. This nest is made of leaves, twigs, sometimes even small mosses, lichens, even feathers. And this animal makes this nest so that they can stay cozy through the winter because they stay here for the winter. It's not a bird though, it's a mammal and it has a big bushy tail. See if you can guess what I'm talking about. So if you guess squirrel, you are correct. So a squirrel nest actually has a special name. It's called a dray. And squirrels actually breed in the wintertime. They can breed starting in December all the way into the summer. Mums, we usually, mum squirrels have about two babies and they will keep them nice and cozy warm inside that dray for the winter. Up in this tree, you can see a dray that's made of leaves and twigs. Usually they use a crook of a tree to keep everything nice and stable. The hole, the entrance to the dray, 
is actually facing a tree trunk so that it blocks it from the wind. So when you're walking through the woods on a winter day, look up into the trees and you'll probably see lots of drays. I love to be a track detective when I'm out in the snow. Here's some beautiful tracks in the snow of an animal that has bounded across. And this animal, I'll give you a hint again, we saw a dray that this animal had built earlier. It's squirrel tracks. And we can tell it's squirrel tracks a couple different ways. First of all, in this track, you can actually see the individual toes of the squirrel. And there's, these are the back hind feet. They actually are on the front of the track. And then these are their small four feet, four legs, which are at the back of the track. In general, the shape of this track is in a square. Okay, and when we look at some other tracks later, they have different shapes. The other big hint is that a squirrel track usually goes from one tree to another. So one of the groups of birds that stay here for the winter are woodpeckers. Woodpeckers need to eat insects and the way that they often get at those insects is pecking holes into trees, in the trunks of trees. So above me here are some woodpecker holes. This woodpecker has been very busy pecking through the layers of bark to get the insect larva underneath. And my guess looking at these holes is this was probably made by a pileated woodpecker, which is a very large woodpecker, almost as big as a crow, with a bright red head. They're really cool to look at. Oh, I think I hear something. Let's use our sense of hearing. So what you just heard or and saw was a hairy woodpecker. It's a beautiful white and black woodpecker and it's fairly large. We have another woodpecker, a downy woodpecker that's a bit smaller than it that looks similar, but it's a really good find. Aren't we lucky we saw that on our walk? So I've used my eyes and I've spotted some more tracks. Let's look at them together and see what they might be. So what we found were some mice tracks. Deer mice and white-footed mice both are active in the wintertime. And the track that we looked at had two feet parallel to each other and a tail mark that dragged along the ground. If they're walking on top of the snow, we can see their tracks. If they crawl underneath the snow, they sometimes make tunnels. And underneath all that snow is really insulated and warm. It can be up to zero degrees along the snow and the soil compared to being minus 20 degrees on top. So they're toasty warm as they forage around and look for food. So I hear another bird call. Let's listen to see what, what it might be. So that call that you heard was a cardinal. Bright, beautiful red bird. And cardinals have different colors depending on whether they are male or female. The male is bright red female is a dull brown color so she can sit on a nest and be hidden. Car male cardinals like to sit up high in the trees and have that beautiful call. So next time you're out, listen carefully for that call. So I think I hear another bird call. Let's listen carefully. So what you just heard was a call of a black cap chickadee. And the male chickadees, when they're calling their mates, they make a call that sounds like cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Let's listen again and see if we can hear it. So I wish you could be here with me right now because I'm using one of my senses to detect an animal that's been nearby. I'm gonna describe it to you, see if you can figure out what it is. It's a black and white animal with a long bushy tail and it can make a really bad smell, which I can smell right now. If you guessed a skunk, you were correct. They are active during the winter and I can smell the remnants of one that's been around right now. So here's something that you could do to help out our feathered friends in the winter time. You can make a very easy and simple bird feeder. Here are the things that you will need to make your bird feeder. You will need a pine cone, fairly large one, with the uh, seeds kind of sticking out a little bit, make it easier. You'll need some seeds, and here I've got some sunflower seeds, but you can use any other type of bird seed that you like. You'll need some string and scissors, a butter knife, and I've used peanut butter today, but you can use other substitutes, almond butter, you can use lard or Crisco, something that's gonna help our seeds stick to our pine cone. So what you're gonna do is take your pine cone, 
and you're going to take the whatever butter you've decided to use and you're going to spread it onto your pine cone. I'm only going to do a little bit of it today to show you what it looks like, but you are want to cover that entire cone with the peanut butter to get, make sure that it's all covered. Once you have the peanut butter spread all over your whole pine cone, you're going to take it and roll it in your seeds. Make sure that you get it all stuck on there. And you can see there's my sunflower seed stuck to the peanut butter. You want to roll the whole pine cone, make sure it's all covered. And the next thing we're going to do is put a string on it so that we can hang it from a tree. So now I've tied my string onto my pine cone. Now I can take it and hang it on my branch up here. And hopefully our feathered friends will want to come and visit. Nut hatches, downy woodpeckers, and chickadees would love our tasty treat. So we've come to the end of our nature walk and I wanted to really thank you for joining me today. I had a lot of fun with you. There's lots of things that you can do to continue to learn about nature. You can listen for bird calls. You can look for insects that might be hiding and keeping warm in the winter. And you could also make your bird feeder and hang it somewhere in either in your backyard or even in your schoolyard so that the birds can have a resource in the winter. So thank you for joining me and on behalf of scientists in school, have a great day.